Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to convert a trial chambers into a base. That way you have a nice secure place to live that's already pre-built. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And first off, our pallet. Since this entire place is pretty much pre-built for us, we don't have to worry too much about making each room. We just need to make them pretty and livable, which means we're going to be using primarily wood blocks. Dark oak for decoration, mangrove for the flooring, and if I can, cherry. Although, if we find cherry difficult, don't worry about it. And then, it's pretty easy to do all this. We're pretty much doing interior design only, and all you need to do is find and defeat an entire trial chamber, including the ominous vaults. You'll notice the vaults are missing because I backported the structure, so that way I can use world edit on it. And with all this in mind, you have 8 tasks you need to do in order to make sure these rooms are ready. And just by doing these, you'll have very nice rooms that you can decorate. Make sure all the copper bulbs look like this. If you need to, take all the oxidation off and then re-wax them. That way you have proper lighting. On that note, make sure you add more lights when they need to be added. This part can be a little difficult, but a general rule of thumb is to avoid ceilings. Because the ceilings are flat, we don't want to draw too much attention to them because it would be pretty tough to redo all of them due to their scale. Then, we need to make sure all the trial spawners are secure, and then remove the blocks under them. You can see here, I did that by placing trap doors around them, and then you don't know what actually comes out of these because the mob is missing because I'm in creative mode and have mob spawning disabled. And then, what do you know? These are pretty much unidentifiable spawners. After that, you need to open the vaults because of course we might have to remove a few of them. Make sure everyone in multiplayer has the chance to open them first. Then remove the traps and put in normal walls. And you can see with these walls, well, they're nice and flat and you'll get a bunch of things for treasure when you remove all the dispensers. Another thing is that there's lines of chiseled tough bricks along all these wa walls. And the problem is, they don't always continue through. You'll notice that some pieces need to be fixed. Go through and do that, but that one can be a bit more vague and hard to do. But make sure to look at each wall before calling it finished. And then add some extra lights and remove the copper grates around. And then, you'll have a pretty nice room. From this angle, we have it all completed and ready for refurbishment. Although on this side, we have stairs, grates, a vault here, although we'll probably leave them, and then this wall of grates. We don't want those. So be careful about having the grates in the way because it makes it into an arena, not a base. While you clean up your room, you're going to notice the inconsistent patterns more. Although this looks completely normal, once you remove the grates and traps, you're going to notice small things like these present, where there's bricks or even polished tuff in the way. You'll need to fix these in order to make sure your build looks finished. It should be a pretty simple process, do a final pass on the ceiling, make sure you can actually place blocks right, unlike me. And then, once all of that is handled, go back down to the lower layers and remove walls you don't need. The more walls you have that you don't need, the harder it is to navigate. Well, while it works for combat encounters for making more interesting scenarios, it doesn't exactly work for things like storage rooms. This style of room I recommend making your storage room. And while there are a bunch of different versions of trial chambers, not all of which I can mention here, there are a couple of rooms that are better at things than other rooms. While this one works more as a general purpose room, this one might be a bit tougher to work with in general. Perhaps this one could be the one you leave normal, so that way you could enchant using mob XP? Who knows? Either way, you should keep each room on a checklist or something like that and think about what you need in your base. Storage, crafting, nether portals. I recommend making one of these your nether portal, but the idea still stands. With the extra details removed, we now have ourselves a very simple room. You might want to change the pillars real quick. You can see right here, this is how they look bare, but you can add a bit more copper and some t polished tuff. And what do you know, you have better pillars. 
although this is optional. And then, once you're done with this specific room, you can more or less apply all the things I mentioned here to other rooms. And now, we move on to what we want to use this room for. I strongly recommend storage, which means we're going to need both layers here. Use the middle area, so that way you can get yourself a nice bubble elevator. Right here in the middle, what do you know? Bubble elevator. Include crafting tables around, embed chests or barrels into the wall, and you'll have a fantastic storage system that will last you a very long time. With all of the optimizations to the room done, it's now time to fill in your infrastructure. First off, a bubble elevator, two pieces of lava because it just looks cool, and then another portal. Although you can include another portal in another room, still, it's nice to have one right in the storage room so you can immediately unload. Then up here, these pillars are replaced partially with glass, so that way you can see through them and then see what you're going to be sorting in this area. Now I'm going to be including barrels. Be careful about removing the bulbs though, it might make the room too dark. And along with that, you might need to do this from time to time in order to give it a little bit more framing, although that one might be unnecessary. Either way, start including your storage. Now, it's time for the big reveal. What happens if you use interior design on this? Swap the palette a little for a little bit of mangrove, and otherwise make changes to turn it into a storage room. Well, this is what happens. You can see, this is a massive change, but it's not necessarily as difficult as you might think. For the walls, I got rid of the vault and added storage, then next to it, some chiseled bookshelves in case you ever needed to store enchanted books. I'll still be making a separate library. Then, crafting tables around, making sure to add the occasional table. And these little platforms here are so you can actually make the jump to here, along with some removed pillars to assist with that. When spacing these, make sure you can get up and down. And if you missed a jump, well, don't worry, there's carpet with powder snow under it so that way you don't take fall damage. In here, you go down in order to get to the mine, you can go up out of the mine, and then two ways up. Of course, we still have our spawners here in case you ever need to fight things. Of course, be careful of debris messing up all of your redstone in here. But otherwise, we have a completed storage room. Small details, of course, are still needed here and there. You can include more chests down here. Make sure to have slabs on top so that way you can still open them. Piles of gold if you ever wanted more interesting gold storage, decorated pots, poker box storage if need be, a few shelves here and there, a loom, and even an enchanting table, although this one does not get you to the proper level, hence why I'm still making a separate library. Using this design knowledge, we can move into this intersection here. This variant might work best for you, but you might have a different one, which could be annoying to work around but you can still use all of the design tips from the first room. What I recommend doing is making a separate bedroom all sectioned off. There's a secret one in most trial chambers with this variant, well, all of them with this specific intersection, so use that to your advantage. For this specific variant, I recommend going to the top floor where there's the hidden bedroom and turning it into a bedroom. Pretty much. Do some minor refurbishments, but keep the general layout the same. You can see, I only added a few small things here and there, and what do you know? Looks like a cute little breakfast nook. Then we have this area right here, all nicely detailed, with the things you need. With all this in mind, you now have another issue. An ominous vault that is present in pretty much any intersection. While some of them you can ignore, such as the underwater one, where you can turn that into a little breakfast nook like this, well, this one's kinda out there. What you really have to do here is one, remove the grates and all the surrounding decorations. Because once you remove all the decorations, you're left with the single block. From here, you can either preserve it by putting glass in front of it, or you can straight up cover it up. Something like this, even though it's gonna be a little obvious, might be okay depending on what you're doing with your trial chamber. Who knows, you might even want to make a small platform there to make it make sense. So, maybe you want to put some trapdoors there? Who knows? Either way, try hiding the vault or incorporating it some way or another. Of course, the option of straight up destroying it is still up in the air, but as I said at the beginning, 
I want to minimize that because it's a very arduous process and you do lose the vault at the end of the day. With the same design being applied to the rest of the room, I think I've made something quite interesting. You can see a bunch of pots around, a jukebox, barrels for your music discs, and a spiral staircase instead of whatever was going on originally, books on the walls, and other miscellaneous things about. Along with that, in between the room connections, where I might want to change the ground block, I've added grates and put something under it, whether it be lava or raw copper. I recommend doing the same. And now, we move on to the main hall. Continue with your removing the oxidation off of the bulbs, and then remove the blocks under each spawner, makes it easier to work around, and then something else you might want to do. If you have something tall in the way, like this, you might want to remove it, because as long as it doesn't have a vault inside, it kind of detracts from the view and doesn't do anything more. Along with that, don't forget about the consistent patterns on the pillars, like this, where you want to go in and make these copper things wrap all around, because currently they do not. While you're accommodating for the player instead of the structure in your main corridors, there are a few things I recommend. For one, try changing the topography of the place. There is a trial spawner down here. I covered it up and I have a grate to make sure the player doesn't forget should they ever need to access it again. And then, of course, glass. Covering up the spawners, use different methods to do it so that way it's more unique. Separating these grates here mainly because I just don't like them in the actual structure. Now you have to do minor parkour to get across. Nether portal right here, even though it's not necessarily in the most accessible place, it's still in, well inside the base and it has a pretty grand entrance. And then changing the topography, some more. In here, you can see the stairs go down and then they go back up. Do we really need that? Instead, we can include stairs here in between these little sections that I copied from here. I put cobbled deep slate behind it in order to make it seem a little less refined. All that good stuff. From here, decorate with your pottery shards if you have access to those, assuming you're not inside of a beta still. And then, you'll have a nice corridor. And don't forget that all trial chambers have two corridors. Even if it might be hard with that super tall vertical variant, you should be working on both of them. While finishing up your corridors, there's something you're going to notice. Dead ends. And you'll notice a distinct lack of them here. That's because I covered them all up. You get some free vault loot and that's pretty much it. There's nothing more to these little things. You loot them, you might want to fill them up, who knows, take their resources and leave. There isn't anything else to say. Although sometimes they might link up in cool ways, right here a dead end in that room almost perfectly aligns with the main corridor. Maybe you want to make a doorway so that way you can skip that whole area over there and go straight to this room. Who knows? But the important thing to note is the fact that you don't want to keep that dead ends if you don't have to. Cover them up, then add your bubble elevators or hallways into getting to the rooms. You can see here, there's an unnecessary spiral staircase. Instead, I can make a bubble elevator to go up to this room. In here, we have variant 4 of the trial chambers. This one's a little unique because it has a pretty simplistic layout. Initially, all you need to do is remove these grates here, and then it will be all non-arena-like. The biggest issue with this one is the fact that a trial spawner may generate here. And this is very, very in the way. Fortunately, it always generates as a small melee, which means if need be, you can remove it. For my purposes, I recommend removing it and biting the bullet with that one, since it's only going to be something like baby zombies or silverfish, something that you don't, well, at least I hope, don't deem super valuable. Now, with this removed, you can now replace the floor with your copper again. The other one can stay and can generally just, yeah, there isn't much else to say about this room. I'm going to be turning this one into a brewery and potentially making a glass floor here. And while there, there's a lot of vaults in this room, they're all relatively out of the way, which means if you need to do a storage room, you might be able to leave those in. In this room right here, 
which is variant 4, you can see I've turned it into a brewing room. And this might look seriously complex, especially if you're new to building, but it really isn't. All I did was I came up with a checklist of everything I'd need. First off, I want to keep all of my brewing related things in here rather than the main storage room. So I put up a bunch of barrels with chains connecting them, so that way I have a more interesting solution to storage. Then right here, I included grates because, you know, a little bit of transparency. Using different woods for each layer to make it a bit more interesting to look at, and then some stairs to make it look like this place has been used a lot. A bunch of brewing stands, and then random shelves full of random items. And then carrots and sugarcane for their respective brewing recipes, and then down here where there's a pillar, I turned it into a small room to sleep in. It's up to you to include a flower pot on there. Then cauldrons, basic other things, making sure to cover up the vaults with paintings and a room respectively, and what do you know, a brewing room. Don't forget about putting a fortune 3 tool in an item frame. And that's pretty much it for this room. All you need to do is come up with a checklist of what you need to do, and then do it, and then look over it again, brainstorm, and if you're happy with it, well, that's all you need. Now, don't forget about decorated pots, but we now have ourselves this room which is an identical copy. And like I said earlier, it might be worth removing some of the hazards in the room and simply leaving it as is. Especially if you have a spider-based one and you have a room nearby that happens to be a brewing room, maybe leave it as is. Especially if you have a giant trial chamber and you don't know what to do with all the space. Which means I'm not touching this room. You can still include bubble elevators, but I'm going to leave this normal. Up next is this room, the powder snow room. And what I really have to say about this is one, secure this. You're going to have ranged mobs, so either skeletons, strays, or bogged. None of those you really want in this room. Basically, get rid of all the spawners by encasing them or potentially straight up destroying them. Don't recommend that one though, because they're pretty easy to work around in this room. Remove the hazards and then put carpet all over the powder snow. It negates fall damage. I'm going to turn this sp specific room into a library. With the next room, the library, there is a unique opportunity that arose. The fact that it was perfectly aligned with the rest of this corridor, which means I could put stairs down, and now I have two entrances into this room. Notice how it's all carpeted, and although there's no texture on it, this is for good reason. The fact that it's actually all powder snow. Can completely turn this arena into something you can use quite quickly. And as for the vaults, right here, I was able to cover the ominous one. Unfortunately, I had to get rid of the one right here because there wasn't a good way to hide it. Notably, a lot of the upper platforms have been removed in favor of making this a more square-like room, but with some unique parkour around. Basic decorations, some pots here and there, nothing too interesting. I mean, there's this room here, I kind of like it. Good way to keep the spawner intact and making it a focal point of the room too. Either way, now it's time for our final room, because, of course, this one will be left as an arena. And this is the assembly room. What I recommend is getting rid of basically all of the copper grates that line the area, and as long as your entrance isn't through here, then you have another opportunity. I want to make this room a blacksmith, and this is already a trench for me to put lava in. If you do not have access to that trench because that's entrance, that's completely fine. But if you can, it's quite useful. Occasionally, there'll even be a trial spawner right here, which is already nice and packaged away, so that way you can disable it. Now, it's time for the very final room, right before the blacksmith, before showing it off. You can see it for a few frames, so, you know, you're lucky. But right here, all I did was I covered up the ominous vault, signified by an anvil, and the chest. Nothing very interesting here, besides I made the copper go down all the way into the water. And now, I hid the vault on the ceiling, and then we can go to the blacksmith itself. It might seem like there's a lot going on in this room, but really, it's the fact that I use flashy things. I use a bunch of lava, along with a pipe going across a ceiling in order to make it a bit more immersive. And then, the obvious elephant in the room, the 10 suits of diamond armor. 
Each one has a base point under it representing a different armor trim. It's up to you if you want to fulfill this challenge, but essentially, you'll need 280 diamonds worth of trim in order to get all of these their own suit of armor. It's up to you, and it's a very very hard challenge, but who knows. Then, some raw iron hanging from the ceiling, optional. Keeping the breeze spawner here because of course, that's actually quite valuable. Anvils, anvil railings, copper piles, copper pipes, trim wall, and then up here, a nice simple bedroom. And then, for this little bogged spawner, all I did was I put a door on it. Welcome to your new apartment. Give me 1700 bucks. Yeah, average California situation right there, but anyways, this is the blacksmith. And now, you are essentially done with the build. You still have these main hallways for whatever you need. You can turn these into villager trading halls. If you have a spare room, you can always convert it into something else if a new block arises in the game. And then over here, I have the entrance. All I did was make this area into a formal room, hid the vault, and added some pots while replacing the chests. Otherwise, there is not anything particularly interesting in this area, and I don't really recommend doing anything in here because despite being so-called entrance, look at the amount of walking you have to do to get to the other end. Essentially, it's not worth your time to do anything with the entrance if you're going to make it your actual entrance. I propose you use this intersection here with bubble elevators. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. And if you're watching this at release, well, 121's coming out in a few days. Perhaps you might want to try this. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.